between fridges and the Nomad V5 because of spring and people pulling their power sources out with their fridges and they may have not used them for a while. They get confused, lost the instructions and uh, don't know really how that relationship works. And what I wanted to come off today is really the importance of understanding the fridge. 99% of the issues that people have is because they don't understand that a fridge doesn't simply plug into a power source and that just runs. Because it will have a range that it will operate between. So in the instructions on page one, it actually says about the relationship charging a fridge and running the Nomad, etc. and so on. And it tells you that your fridge will have an operating range of something between 9 volt right through to even 14.6 or 14 volt. And it will like the high ranges as well. So what you need to understand is that, and I'll just give you an example. This fridge down here, um, which is a 40 litre fridge, this one here will cut out at 9 volt. When that sees 9 volt and less, it will stop. Um, the Nomad will cut out 9 volts, so it's a perfect match there. This big fridge here is a 95 litre fridge, and it cuts out at 10.7 volt. So what it sees at the fridge, if it's 10.7 or less, it'll show an error. And I'm going to show you how that works in a moment. Because what we'll have is people buy the Nomad, you don't realise that it's full at 12.6, but it runs down like a fuel gauge. And we'll get asked how long would a fridge run, or how long would it run a fridge. It's like, it's, how long is a piece of string? It's like buying the two of the vehicles or two cars that are exactly the same and, and, and not understanding why one of them runs 200 kilometres more than the other one. Um, how has it been driven? Is it on eco? Is it on sport mode? Is it highway cycle or is it city cycle? So if everyone want to make a difference, and believe it or not, people do come back to the car yard saying your friend has a car and does a lot better economy-wise. And that's the reason for it. So the Nomad, depending on what your fridge is set at, this dual system here is set at minus 15 for the fridge. I've got it zero for the, sorry, Minus 15 for the freezer and zero for the fridge compartment, but a 95 litre fridge. Now I know when I use this 95 litre with a Nomad fully charged that I could get five days out of it from full to empty and I'll show you how to do that in a moment using a step up. But the purpose of a, of a power source is not to see how long it runs from full to empty. Power source is designed to take the power of the PV, store it and hold it and then convert it obviously for your accessories and then you can run it overnight. And the typical way to off-grid is you're always cycling. So a 200 watt solar panel with a Nomad, if you plug it in unregulated here, maximum, 200 watt unreg, there's a regulator inside. And then what that will do is that will convert and charge it at about 10 amp. A 200 watt panel will get around nine to 10 and a half amp um, on a good day. So it's putting in good nine amp, let's say that, through here. You still have the regulated input to charge from um, if you're gonna be charging from a car. So you could charge from the vehicle at say 10 amp stick of DC. You would have seen the SIGA DCs or Anderson DC setups, and that's simply what it does, it converts. It takes 9 to 36 volt, converts to 12.6 in this case. I could have that at 9 to 36 volt and convert it to 14.6, or I can convert it to 24. They all look the same modules, but they're just actually voltage stabilizers that take a certain voltage and produce something else. If it's stepping down, it obviously uses less amperage to do that conversion. But let's look at this here. The way I've got this set up, and I just wanted to show you, is that this fridge here doesn't like under um, it doesn't like under 10.7 volts um, and I'll get a phone call if someone had this fridge and they'd say that the Nomad's not working let's put this on now and the way I've got this set up so this fridge is going to come in okay the LEDs come on and then you're going to get the compressor cut in so this unit here is on 11.2 I think 11.3 you also have to remember this voltage drop People run cables that are 25, 30 minutes long and they're really underrated cables and then wonder why their fridge doesn't work even though that says 12.6 volt. The, the thing is you could be losing one whole volt across that and the fridge won't see that. So what happens is with the fridge, it'll just say, this is what I'm getting. And I know that fridge there is getting about 0.2 less than what it's showing on the screen here. That is normal. Okay, so as you can see, this fridge is running. And it's only pulling 3 amp. I know that if it was a, a, a lot hotter outside, it's going to draw up to 7 amp when it gets started. So that's running fine now. But let's take this off and plug it into this one. Okay. And it'll come on. It'll just come on enough to give the lighting. And as you can see over here, but now it says E1. Error 1. Now I've got this set on low and eco. So your fridges will have settings. Low, medium, high. It might have an eco setting, it may have a different, every single fridge mate will have its own names for the low, medium, high, and some will have a low voltage cutout. The low voltage cutout is designed for AGM, whereas it won't take any more than 50% of the battery. 
It's not designed for lithium, so all you can do is turn it off or just work within the parameters of when the cutoff is. It may be set at 10.7 anyway. So this one here is not working now at 10.7. We'll get a phone call saying that the Nomad's not working. It's never the Nomad, it's always the fridge. So you can see the lights on and it's not enough power to kick that fridge over. It's not a problem with the fridge, it's not a problem with the Nomad. It's just the way that the, uh, the system works. You've got to remember that compressors and fridges all work differently. Um, they have, have different drawers and a number of different, I guess, technology um, aspects of how they are built. So the way I can get around this, if I wanted to, so this is not working from this unit, is I can use an Anderson DC or a SIG DC, which is taking the 9 to 36 volt input and converts to 12.6 output. This is what you'd see in a vehicle when you charge your car. You plug it into the Anderson of the car, plug it into the Nomad, and that regulates the charge. Batteries like to have regulated charges, they don't like pitches and troughs and spikes and things like that. So let's use this for the same thing. All that the fridge wants to see is a higher voltage than that. So if we plug this in to this one, uh, as an example, and we took this, and use, this could be taken out of the car, by the way. If this was just taken out of the vehicle, and I plug this in, okay? What we should see is that now that that unit should be seeing over 12 volt and it's actually seen 12.6 just now so i'd expect that the compressor will now cut in so that is now cutting in and now that nomad will run dead flat the nomad is flat at just under 9 volt so 12.6 runs right through like a fuel gauge runs down to 9 volt this fridge set up exactly like this as I've got it now using that 10 amp uh, DC. Um, I've got five days out of it, but that's not a 50 degree heat, and that's just got it set like this, and that's just not opening the fridge all day long. So, if you're opening the fridge continually all day and you're in a 50 degree heat and you're up north, you can probably expect to get, say, three or four days, three and a half days out of something this size. But again, how long is a piece of string? How are you going to use your fridge? So, I can do that no problems at all. But what I want to do is show you that this one over here is a 40 litre fridge. Now, this 40 litre will actually run down to 9 volts, so I don't need to use a stepper. However, what I wanted to show you is using the y -Lead, that I can quite happily, let's pull this out, let's go over here, because the question we'll get is, can I run two fridges? Um, can I run two fridges off the Nomad? Well, absolutely. Um, I run two 80 litres off them, um, and I cycle them every day. Um, the whole purpose of a power source is to, is to not try and see how long you can get it to run for from full to flat. The purpose of it is to take the power of the PV from the solar or from the DC, where it's getting, and be able to just provide it to your accessories. And then if you cycle every day, which you should, if you had a solar panel connect this to 200 watt solar panel, which I do, um, and I do have it connected to 285 litres permanently. So, 280 litres, sorry. So that's 160 litres of fridge with a 200 watt solar panel. I don't have a DC input. I use a 200 watt unregulated panel connected to this, and I've got 160 litres of fridge that runs completely every day cycles and every night it's 12.6 and in the morning the worst I've ever seen is 11.7 and I just leave the step ups in there never ever ever runs out and that's what two by 160 sorry 160 litre fridges or two by 80 litre so you can plug that in no problem and then I just out of uh, interest what I'll do is I'll just use another step up you can do this if you wanted to is I could plug that step up you'll see that this fridge is fired up and that's the 40 litre fridge and I'm just using a step up, but I could actually just use my Y lead uh, if that fridge shuts down at 9 volt. Fine. So it depends on what fridge you're using, because your friends might have a fridge that's really, really uh, uh, economical, and then you might have one that's a cheapy and it uses, it uses more power. So you can just basically use a step up and just say, when does my fridge stop working? At what voltage? If your fridge stops working at 9 volt, you don't have to worry about it, just run the uh, Nomad dead flat. But if your fridge cuts out at 11.1, some fridges cut out at 11.5, because people don't realise that they've got on the wrong setting. It's all about the setting. And the first question we'll ask the customer when they say, oh, my Nomad stopped working, is what operational voltage does your fridge work with? And 90% of the time with people with the issues don't understand what that means. So they haven't read the instructions on the fridge. So it's very, very, very rare that it would be a power source because again, it's just a power source. It takes the PV or takes the solar, takes the DC charge, converts it for your uh, AC um, accessories. So as you can see here, those two fridges drawing 6-bit amp, I'd expect both when these are warm to start up, they'd be drawing over 10. Just remember, you've got a maximum output of 20 amp at any given time. 
You could run another fridge off this, you could run three fridges off that, obviously making sure it doesn't go over 20 amp in total. Once you exceed 20 amp out of the Anderson, that's pretty much it. Um, or you can spread it across like I've done here, where I've got that fridge is drawing out of the Sigger, and then I've got some coming out for the Anderson. So those DC, Anderson DC setup, Sigger DCs, they're actually chargers. You can charge from the vehicle or your Anderson. That's what they're designed to do. So you can pull it out like I've done now, and I can use that to run whatever it is I want to run. So I can just run my fridge, and that one's now at temperature, and that's cut right back, and it's just sitting there quite happily. So I can just leave that permanently connected, um, and she'll work perfectly until the Nomad is flat. Like I said, the Nomad V5 is designed for 95% of what people use it for recreationally. Uh, they're not designed for running things like compressors um, or pulling winches and things like that. That's something you just want to look at your AGM for and because you need a lot more draw. So these specifically for your AC products, don't try and run convention ovens and things like that off these as well. It's really, really important. And most of the issues we get are people don't read the instructions. It's the number one thing in the, in the instruction page is about the fridge relationship and how your fridge works. It's very rarely the power source. So I hope that answers your questions, but um, come back to us at contact at nomadpdu.com.au. If you give us that information on your fridge, the make, the model, the temperature settings, and all the rest of it, and tell us what it draws when it fires up, and etc., you should know how much it draws in a 24-hour period. If you've got that fridge set to minus 15, and it's a 95-litre fridge, and you're up in Darwin, I can tell you that fridge will draw consistently probably between 7 and 8 amp. If you've got 7 or 8 amp an hour, and you've got 100 amp power to use, and this is 80% DOD, divide 8 into 100 how many hours does that give you? It's going, to give you? it's going to give you half a day. And in fact, people ring us and say, look, I, only got, I didn't even get a day out of my, fr out of my fridge, and they'll say, I've had it running as a freezer at minus 15 all day, and I'm up at the Pilbara. Okay, the math is the math. You can only get that much out of it. It's simple. What is your fridge drawing, and what have you got available? You could do that, no problem, but make sure you've got a panel and some sort of configuration. You might have a regulated solar panel and putting in 10 amp. You might have an unregulated solar panel and putting in 10 amp here. So you're putting in 20 amp. You could do that, no problems at all. Just make sure that there's no more than 25 at any given time across those two. So 10 amp from here, then you've only got 15 left in the regulated. If you don't use the solar poles, you've still got 25. Okay, not anything over that. Okay, not even a half an amp, it's gonna be 25 less. Rule of thumb is stick around 20 amp. That's plenty, it's plenty to run two fridges and you don't really need any more than that. So more is not necessarily better. So this configuration with a 200 watt solar panel running two fridges, uh, absolutely no problems. You'll be able to run that and cycle it every day. Um, if you had that full and that, like I said, I've got five, da five days out of a different ambient temperature. So again, come back to us, uh, Nomad PDU, uh, contact that. And the other thing is you'll see the 135 and the 105 Life PO4 Prismatic you have to remember this does 95% of the recreational needs. If you know what you're doing, uh, the prismatics will always sit at 12.8 volt uh, consistently right through, but entry level on these is about five or $600 more than a Nomad. So you simply choose the chemistry, but again, the Nomad's been the most popular. And once you know how to use them, they are so versatile and you can do so many things with them. So uh, hopefully we'll talk to you again soon. If you've got any questions, contact at nomadpdu.com.au.